Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to talk about this new feature inside of Comfy UI. It's called Comfy UI Subgraph. Let me show you a quick demo of how it works. So here on the screen, as you can see, I'm inside of Comfy UI. I have a fairly complex, complicated mess here. Comfy UI Subgraph feature will allow you to collapse everything that you don't need into a single super nude in this video i'm going to show you how you can get this feature how to use it i will also show you how you can do partial execution so if you don't want to run the entire workflow but you want to just change one of them with this feature you will be able to do it let's get started all right let's talk about this feature a little bit it is officially released by the comfy ui developers which means it is part of the comfy ui core you are pretty much safe to integrate this directly into your workflow right away. The main purpose of this subgraph feature is to make the complex areas of your workflow into a cleaner and efficient way. Let me show you how to get this feature inside of your Comfy UI, and then I'm going to show you how to use it, including the partial execution. If you have the Windows Portable version, or if you have a manual installation of Comfy UI, you will need to update your Comfy UI to the latest commit. You can do this by going into your file explorer, open up the comfy UI Windows portable version, or if you have like a manual installation like I have, you can go into that folder. Inside that folder, there will be an update folder. Go inside the update folder and you will have three batch files. You only need to click on the update comfy UI.bat or you can do the update underscore comfy UI stable version depending on which one works for you. For me personally, I did this one, update underscore comfy UI dot BAT one, double click on it. It will open up a terminal like this. It will update. Once it's updated, it will tell you to press any key to exit. Simply press enter or return on your keyboard and then start comfy UI like you would normally do. So run NVIDIA underscore GPU, or if you want the fast F16 version, you can run this one. Once Comfy UI start, your normal workflow will look something like this. This is just the default workflow. To verify that you have this feature available, simply look to the bottom right corner of your screen, and you will see a new icon here that says toggle minimap. You can click on it and you should see a minimap. Moving it will move the canvas as you can see here. Now I'm going to hide the minimap. If you have the minimap, it means that you are updated to the latest version and you can test by clicking on any of these node and you will see this icon here. This will convert any selection into a subgraph. So for example, right now I have the key sampler VAE decode selected. I can click on this button and it collapses it into one single node. I can expand it. I can rename this new node by double clicking on the name here. From here, you can see that it's automatically going to create these input slots and they still maintain their connection. We can see the condition positive here, negative, latent, VA is coming from the load checkpoint here and then the model is there. Now, if you remember, the key sampler does not have a VA input. The VA input is coming from this node here, the VA decode. So this new node, it combines all the input into one, and then you have it all here. So as you can see, the VA is here. If you want to test if it works like this, you can click on the run button. And as you can see, it's generating and we have this default image there. What if you want to make some changes to the case sampler settings? Select this subgraph and you may want to zoom in depending on your resolution. We can see that we have a little icon at the top right corner. It identifies this specific one as a subgraph. Now, the one below it will allow you to edit anything that is inside. So if we click on it, just need to click on it once. It will open all the nodes that were inside it. So in this particular case, we can see that we have the key sampler and the VAE decode. Now, the reason why the key sampler was up and the VAE was down, that is because originally in here, to show you that the VAE was coming from the low checkpoint, I moved the VAE decode down. So it kept the position as well. Let's say I don't want a random seed every time. I can change it to fix. Let's do 
42. To exit out of this view, at the top left now, you will see we have some breadcrumbs navigation. So right now we are under the new subgraph node and the default view is everything here. So let me just rename this. And if I go into the sub node now, you can see the name updates at the top and it tells you exactly where you are at. Let's go back. Remember, I've changed the seed here to 42 and I have it at fix. So I'm going to click on the run button. And as you can see, it's generating a new one. If I click on the run button, nothing happened. And that is because the seed is fixed. Even though the K sampler node itself is hidden right now, it is still part of the workflow. But it gets even more interesting because we can do nested subgraph. I'm going to select everything here with the exception of the positive prompt. So let me move the positive prompt away and select everything else. I'm going to create another subgraph. Now, as you can see, now I have this simpler version. And well, we can change the name as well, but we can also just change the positive prompt here. So we can do woman. So as you can see, it works. If I want, let's say a main portrait, I can change the prompt here and I will get the image right here. So it simplifies complicated workflows. Remember, we have a nested node situation. I created the subgraph K sampler, and then I created this new one that still has the name new subgraph. So if I go into this one, at the top here, we can see that I'm under subgraph and I have everything that we needed. But then I can go into the K sampler one too to get to the deepest level. So if you look at the breadcrumbs at the top, we are going from default to subgraph to case sampler. And you can keep on going depending on how complex your workflow is. So this is the example workflow I showed you in the demo before. As you can see here, if I click on the run button, it generates and we have three images. And maybe some of you paid attention, but this node here, it ran three times. Now, this is a subgraph. I can go inside it we see that we only have a checkpoint in here, which goes into another subgraph. Now, if I go into this, here is where most of the complexity is at. So I have three groups that is doing three different things. So this is one group, and then I have another one here, and then another one here. So as a user, let's say you go online, you download a specific workflow, you don't really need to know how these works. You are only interested in this level where you get the images or maybe into this level where you can change some of the features, like some of the options, the prompt or the model that you're using, that kind of things. So this subgraph makes building workflow a lot easier. Previously, we would be spending 15, 20 minutes just arranging workflows, creating pipelines or creating these buses that would connect to a certain section of the workflow. Now you can build your workflow any way you want, even if it is a mess like this, and you can just hide them inside the subgraph. Now, let me go into this subgraph. And right now I have the prompt exactly the same for all three sections here. So let me change the seed from fixed to randomized. And I'm going to do this for all. All right, so that's done. I can go back and if I click on the run button again, pay attention to this subgraph. You will see it run three times. So you can see one, this is two, and then we have three here down. So we got three outputs. The reason why these two are the same, it's because of the workflow itself. I'm basically getting a lower quality image here, and then I'm refining this one here. And this one is just a, a different resolution. Let's make it as if I don't want to change these two. I only want to change this one. But if I click on this run button here, it's going to run this workflow three times, as you can see. So one, two, and three. And now I've lost that previous generation. Actually not because this is a save image, so I can go back, drag it inside of Comp UI to get uh, the seed number, and then I can go in and change it to fix. So one way you would do it is to click on this icon, click on this icon again, find which section of the workflow is affecting this one and then this one and then change the seed to fix. However, we have a simpler way of doing it. 
I can select the output node, in this case, this third output one. And then at the top here, I'm going to get toolbar with some buttons. This is the same toolbar that gave us this convert selection to subgraph. Now we have this one here, which will execute the nodes which are related to this one. So only the nodes which are connected to this preview image, third one, will get executed. Let's click on this play button. You can see one and then this one change. And remember, if I click on the run button at the top, all three preview images are going to change. But if I click on this little icon here, this execute to selected output node, only this one will change while these two are not executed. So this is partial execution and it is a very powerful tool. We don't really care whether it's randomized, increment or anything like that. We can just select a specific output, click on the play button and it executed. By the way, it's not just the last image. It can be the first image as well. So in this specific case, I'm going to select this one, click on the play button and you can see this one changes. Even though this one is connected to this, it stopped the execution when it generated this preview. At the bottom left here, there's going to be a gear icon. Click on it and then in the search settings, click there, type in updates and make sure that this button here is turned on. As of making of this video, the ComfyUI subgraph feature has not been pushed to this specific version of ComfyUI desktop. As you can see down here, we don't have the minimap. And if I select any node here, we don't have this subgraph feature here. You have the ability to use the partial execution. So when you select an output node, you are going to get this button. So we just have to wait for the next update for ComfyUI desktop. All right, so thank you for watching until the very end. If you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon. I will have a link in the description below. However, the easiest way to support the channel would be to give this video a like, subscribe if you have not, and I will see you next time.